Yes, it's the cigar and whiskey tag. This is an original tag created by Dalton and Adrian over at Strip Cover Lit, who tagged me in their video. And how could I say no? I mean, having a whiskey and a cigar is the perfect accompaniment to reading. Now, I am going to change this tag around a little bit and take it in the spirit of Dalton, who says, do whatever the hell you like with this tag. Because, well, I'm a huge fan of whiskey. I run a lot of whiskey tastings here in town because, well, because whiskey. I've hosted sessions on Canadian whiskey, and I've run a ton on tequila because I'm a huge fan of tequila as well. But when it comes right down to it, I want nothing more than to enjoy a whiskey and a cigar with these guys now. Can you imagine a book con with a cigar lounge where everyone could sit down, discuss books over a mojito, an old-fashioned, or just some scotch? It sounds pretty awesome. So let's get to the tag itself. Number one, Jack Daniels, a classic that you found manly and philosophical. Now, Let's be honest here. We're talking mainly in philosophical. We're talking Scotch. Preferia Lagavulin, 16-year-old, which is a nice, big, peaty bomb, and conveniently Ron Swanson's drink of choice. No, Jack Daniels represents high school overindulgence. Jack Daniels is the book that you thought was the real deal, philosophically, in high school. I knew lots of people that worshipped at the altar of Ayn Rand. Um, that devoured Isaac Asimov's Foundation series or read Tolkien's Lord of the Rings over and over every year. For me, it was Herman Hesse. I devoured Siddhartha, I'd read Steppenwolf countless times, and I did my high school paper on Magister Ludi. Now, unfortunately, much like those Jack Daniel-fueled escapades in high school, I recall very little of any of this now. Number two, Jim Beam, an unappreciated classic that always does the trick. Well, I've never been a big fan of Jim Bean. My underappreciated classic has always been Buffalo Trace, also a bourbon. This is relatively inexpensive, beautifully tasty. My go-to kitchen sink bourbon, I always try and have some of it around the house. As far as books go, it would be The Crying of Lot 49. Thomas Pynchon is best known for his work Gravity Rainbow, V, and Inherent Vice, which was made into a movie last year, but I still love The Crying of Lot 49. It's one of my favorite, fun, engaging reads. But a worldwide conspiracy, an underground postal service, or maybe it's just the mounting paranoia of an individual woman. But it is still always a fantastic read, and I've reread it a couple times already. Number three, Old Crow. Something so dirty and gritty that it makes you feel like vomiting. Actually, I'm not familiar with Old Crow. They don't even sell it here in Ontario, where our booze is actually very strictly regulated by the province, which severely limits my access to premium tequila and really great bourbon. But I guess it also makes means I miss out on some Old Crow. Shouldn't feel too bad. But for the tag, the book I chose was Richard Preston's Hot Zone, which is a non-fiction exploration of the Ebola virus. And it also features a lot of vomiting, as well as uh, internal organ failure, massive hemorrhaging, bat guano, and lots of death. And it is really right now. Viruses are coming in hot and heavy. Right now it's the Zika virus, but... We've also had SARS, West Nile, N1H1, and of all things, smallpox again. And as a voracious reader, we all know that it's not a matter of if, but when, the world ends due to some massive pandemic, whether it's the Georgian flu a la Station Eleven, or Project Noah and Justin Cronin's The Passage, or Ophiocordyceps in The Girl with All the Gifts. The world is going to end in some sort of viral plague, probably. Depressing. Number four, Maker's Mark, a top shelf drink for a perfect book movie pairing. Now, Maker's Mark, never been a huge fan. If you want top shelf bourbon, I highly suggest the Colorado Breckenridge bourbon, which is pure liquid gold. Fantastic stuff. Now, as far as a book movie pairing, you know what? It's tough as far as both of them goes, but I'm going to have to go with The Martian because it's fresh in my mind. The book I liked well enough. It was a little too sciencey for me, but the movie was absolutely fantastic. Matt Damon is a perfect Mark Watney and nails the tone. Frankly, I couldn't believe that I was watching a two-hour movie that is essentially about a gardening vlogger on the planet Mars. Great one-two hit. Number five, Factory Milds. I have no idea what Factory Milds are. Um, but the tag is terrible literature that you're going to read again. Um, I can't really think of anything in the spirit of DNFing books and dropping books that I'm not enjoying. I am not going to pick them up and reread them. I have a hard enough time doing that with books I absolutely loved, let alone those books that I couldn't even finish. 
seems very unlikely. The closest I could probably come to it is I was almost going to read some more William Faulkner. There was going to be a read-along with Conrad over at the Deckled Edge, and they were going to read Sanctuary. I had a really bad experience with Absalon Absalon, and I wasn't sure I was ever going to revisit Faulkner. I might eventually. I just got waylaid by the Crimson Petal in the White and reading that with uh, Kamal over at What Camel Reads. Number six, number seven, Swisher Sweets. Serious packaging, laughable literature inside. For me, that would be The Giver. It's got this big gold emblem on the cover, clearly winner of some prestigious award, well-loved by millions. I read it, did not like it. It felt less written and more manufactured by some sort of child-rearing factory, and I kept expecting some color-coded laminated sheet to fall out of the back, filled with questions like, what do you think of the world that Jonas lives in? Can you explain using five complete sentences? This was just not a book that appealed to me, and to be fair to the book itself, the award on the front is the Newbery Medal, which is an award for children's literature. So maybe I came in with far too high of expectations with the book, but still did not like. And finally, The Cuban, one book that you can recommend for the rest of your life. Now the tag says Cuban, and frankly that includes Cohibas, Monte Cristos, and H. Upman's, three fantastic cigars from Cuba, so I'm going to recommend three books. First off, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie's Americana, a fantastic read. You can open up the book to any page and be blown away what's written there. Number two, David Foster Wallace's Infinite Jest. Obvious choice, I suppose, but frankly, that along with the infinitesummer.org website has shown what collaborative reading on the internet can mean for books, and it's frankly one of the reasons I got into BookTube in the first place. And number three, Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre, because Jane Eyre don't care. 200th anniversary of her birth. I have reread this book countless times, and every time I find something new to love in it. Highly recommend that as well. And so there you have it. It's the cigar and whiskey tag. Now, this is a bit of an oblique tag. I don't imagine there's a lot of you out there that enjoy both cigars and whiskeys. But if you do, I want you to do this tag. And offer up some recommendations as well as far as tipples and cigars that you enjoy. Otherwise, I hope you have a great reading week. We'll talk to you later.